Hey everybody, welcome to this video review of Flea Mortals, the MCDM monster book. This is incredible. First of all, um, this is the premium edition that I got by kickstarting it. Um, I think this will be available, I hope this will be available. If not, um, the base book itself is still incredible. But um, as many of you guys know on my channel, I am doing primarily Shadow Dark RPG these days. But this, if I go back to 5e, this is the way I'm going to be running my monsters from now on. It is incredible. So first of all, the book comes in this really lovely um, dust jacket. I like the, the art there. It's really incredible. Uh, the art throughout this entire book is premium. They really went above and beyond. Um, not that I expect less from MCDM. Everything that they have done so far has been really, really incredible. But um, yeah, this is no exception. So as you can see, the book is this nice leatherette. Um, they say there were no monsters harmed in the making of this book, so it's you know, sort of vegan leather. Um, but it's got this nice gold foil. Um, on the side there, you can see the same thing. Really, really incredible back cover, just bare black. It really just feels good just to like <laughs> uh, touch. Um, the, the book is heavy. That's one thing. This book is heavy. Uh, the page quantity, I'm going to split this around. I don't have a camera set up here. I don't usually do this. Uh, it's nearly 400 pages, pages. Nearly 400 pages. That's incredible. Um, and the, the, the paper quality is absolutely premium. It's nice and stitched bound. I don't know if you can see that. Of course, it's got a nice little... Um, yeah, here. You can see. Uh, it's nice and stitch bound back there, and it's got the uh, little red bookmark. But then this is how to do a monster book, let me tell you. Okay, so um, as I said before, the art in this book is incredible. really is piece, uh, hit after hit. Um, it's not in my preferred style, which is much more kind of um, line and ink. I like that Shadow Dark style of art, but when it comes to full color, high fantasy art, this book is really, really good. Um, the monsters are creepy and weird. I think Matt Colville said on his channel that uh, vanilla D&D doesn't have to be boring. And let me tell you, this is not boring. This is just incredible. Um, this little guy. He's awesome. So uh, the book is divided up into various sections. Of course, um, you have these, uh, a lot of heavy four, uh, fourth edition elements here. Um, so he, he divides monsters into types, um, and they have you know minions and ambushers and support units and skirmishers and things like that. And you can then and, and it's really a helpful way of thinking about your monsters. I wasn't a big fan of 4E, but those sorts of descriptors I'm absolutely a fan of. And um, and I think in a book like this, um, it fits really well, which is kind of 5E combat done right. I you know I'm sure that the new 5.5 edition of whatever. Uh, is going to be great. I'm sure the art is going to be fantastic, uh, and I hope that they they learned a lot from the other editions. But this is this is what Wizards of the Coast wishes they were making. This book is incredible, and I really can't say enough about it. Um, now, I, obviously, there's a lot of stat blocks here. Uh, I don't have a good, high enough quality camera to show you a lot of those details, um, but there are so many monsters in here. So many monsters. Page after page after page of different kinds of monsters and then variations on those monsters. So you don't just get one knoll, right? You get lots of different kinds of knolls. You don't just get one bear, bug, kind of bugbear. You get bugbear channelers and bugbear predators and bugbear regulars and bugbear roughnecks. Right? You get a whole bunch of different types of chimeras, including chimera companions, say. That's another element that this book adds is companion. So if you want to get a particular kind of creature and have it be a, an NPC in your party or sort of a companion you know, thing that follows you around, you can do that. And there's stats for it and rules for it. Um, MCDM is, is big on subsystems um, for these sorts of things. And I think they did a great job of a lot of these subsystems. Now, um, when it comes to the monsters themselves, I backed the Kickstarter, and so I had access to a lot of these monsters. Um, when I was running my last West Marches in 5e, which was kind of the last campaign I did there, and I started to use these monsters as they came out, and let me tell you, they were great. They were way better 
than anything I used from the Monster Annual. I, I basically exclusively switched over to the monsters from this book, at least the, uh, the look at this, look at this guy. You want to use him. You want to use him in a campaign. He is excellent. Uh, Durix Avionics. Durix Avionics. Durix Avionics. Um, Forzan... Tyrolis, Fours and Tyrolis. A lot of cool names. You got some dragons. You got to be epic dragons. And each of these dragons has a beautiful, full piece of art um, for each one. I mean, again, you, this is how you make a monster manual. Now, there are some weird things here. Like, for example, this up here at the top of the page is blank, and the stat block comes below. And that's just not the usual format. So, like, there are, are, are a couple things like that. So, while I say that this is a, another gorgeous piece of art, look at that one. Oh, my goodness. So, I can't say that it's perfect. I mean, and obviously, there's, there's mistakes. But those mistakes are, are minor. Um, I haven't found any spelling errors, really. I'm sure there's one or two grammar errors, uh, little things like that. But, but for the most part, they pale in comparison to the quality of this book. If you're going to run 5e, you got to buy this book. If you're going to run 5e and you're going to make it combat centric. Now, um, I know that MCDM is making their own system, and I'm sure that a lot of the influence of this game, or a lot of the, a lot of the uh, elements of this game will come into that. But when it comes to the quality, I'm going to jump ahead a bit. Look at this. Look at these worms. Look at this guy. You want to you want to you want to fight him. You want to bring him out. You want to throw him at your players. Um, here's a whole section on NPC stat blocks, different kinds of humans, human knaves, human raiders, human guards, and and so for those of you who aren't familiar, the way that uh, MCDM uh, views creatures is it, it doesn't see them just as like here's hit points, here's their base action, and then maybe they have some spells or something like that. But rather, almost every stat block in the book has some interesting actions, things that they can do in combat that make them really cool and interesting. So for example, this kobold uh, artifacts, he has his basic armor class, hit point, speed that you might see elsewhere. But then he has a set of actions. He's got his multi-attack, which is great. He's got his chain hook, and he can do that. But if he uses that, then he can make an activate trap. And so he's got this three times per day activate trap ability. And these are his traps that he can activate. So yes, he is just a little kobold. And he's not that tough. He's got 15 hit points, 49, or sorry, 49 hit points and 15 AC. So for a kobold, he's pretty tough. He's a challenge rating to controller, which means his traps are really what makes him dangerous. Not his direct damage, but what he's doing to you in the combat in terms of your stats. This is not a boss monster exactly. He's a controller, but you might use him in uh, in combat. So he's got uh, in kind of a bigger combat, I should say, and he has this activate traps ability, which makes him more interesting. Um, and all of the creatures in this book have something like this: a kobold legionary. Yes, he's got his multi attack, but he's also got other things he can do. A shield bash, for example. He's got his gladius attack. Right? And then he's got a reaction, which makes him more interesting. Under certain circumstances, he can do um, extra stuff. And almost every monster in the entire book, I, I venture to say every monster that I've looked at, has interesting actions that they can do in combat, more than simply attacking and defending. The reason you use these monsters as opposed to the standard 5e monsters in the Monster Manual is that these are going to be way more fun for you and the players. They're more interesting. They make the combats tougher. Different kinds of medusae. What do you mean medusas? Medusae? Mimics. <laughs> That's a great piece of art. Guys going in there, they're about to get wrecked. So again, why would you use this book? Um, is it worth the price of admission? Absolutely. If you're going to play 5e, I mean honestly, this book makes me want to go back and play some 5e. Just to use the monsters in this book. You could create campaigns around these guys. Um, and I know that, like, look at these orcs. These are not just average orcs. These are really fascinating creatures. And they're going to make your game 
way better to use these orcs as opposed to the standard 5e orc. In 5e, the monster manual, what do you have? You have uh, an orc, you have an orog, you have uh, an eye of Groomsh or something like that. But in here, I mean, again, you've got this base page on what orcs are like in this version of them. You've got a, pay, a little uh, thing on orc tactics down here. And then you start off with the orc blitzer, the orc blood runner, the orc conduit, the orc force caller, orc fury, or the orc garroder or garroder, the orc god caller. And again, this goes on and on. So that if you use orcs in your campaign, you're not just going to be using boring orcs. You're going to be using a lot of different kinds of orcs, including villains. Villains that have particular special villain actions, which if you know the MCDM studio or if you know Matt Colville, his idea behind villain actions makes bosses way better. And this book has plenty of examples for each kind of monster. So you could run a campaign about orcs and have plenty of different kinds of orcs that you don't have to throw all of them out at once, you know, but you, you throw them at the players slowly over the course of the campaign. They get introduced to different kinds of orcs, different kinds of uh, combinations of these orcs. And then finally, they're facing off with the villain orc who has his horde and all that stuff. Uh, then there's the classic Overmind. He's sort of the mascot of the entire system, or I should say of this particular book. Uh, the Owlbear. Can't go wrong with an owlbear. Again, I, I just really can't say enough about this book. This is the Time Raiders. I think they're a bit like the Gith, although they're a modifi modified version of the Gith. Uh, much more interesting. Again, like everything in this book is much more interesting than the standard D&D 5e monsters. And then again, you just get this incredible art. This is the Titans. Um, just incredible art. As I said, this book makes me want to run 5e. Now this is a Kraken. That is a Kraken. So once again, shades are more interesting. Zombies are more interesting. Crawling claws are more interesting. You can have a crawling claw as a companion. Here's a lich. And then here's a particular lich. Right, so you've got the more standard stat block, and then you've got a villain with its villain actions and a description of who he is and a bit of his backstory, and then a piece of art. If you want to show your players, you can show them. Awesome. Mummies, particular mummy lord, vampires. Really, really great work. And then this is, again, another really, really great piece of art and also kind of a, not a not a, a mascot of the book, but I think this is the cover of the new other alternative book they're releasing alongside this, which is sort of a, an adventurous uh, adventure set um, from level 1 to 20 for each of the major, or for a lot of the major monsters that they include in here. So you can have this sort of um, set piece battles built in, a book full of set piece battles that you can build you could play as one shot, or you could build two uh, as over the course of campaign. Count Rodar von Glauer. Of course, he's a. Uh... Oh, they've got robots. <laughs> Incredible. That's something that's missing from a lot of D and D games. Is a little bit of science fantasy. They have their own takes on a lot of the more copyrighted. Uh, 5e creatures, things that they can't necessarily include. They have uh, creatures that are different enough to avoid copyright infringement, but they're close enough to do um, other things. So this is another element of the book that I love. It's chapters on environment. So you have descriptions of the different kinds of places, a fossil cryptic. Caves and the different things that could be in the cave. And then you have creatures that are specific to that sort of environment. And then you have a little battle map here. And then an enchanted forest. And again, some creatures that are specific to that kind of environment. And then you get another battle map. Really, really, really excellent stuff. I know I'm saying really, really excellent a lot, but that's really, <laughs> that's how I feel about this book. Is it, it makes me more interested in running fifth edition than I have felt 
in a long, long time. And I, I'm still gonna be playing Shadow Dark. That's my new system, and I, I prefer it for a number of reasons. But this book and the creatures in it will make your 5e campaigns just so much better. If you're if you're sticking with fifth edition, if you're gonna get the new books when they come out, think of this as the last hurrah for 5e. That you use these monsters in the base 5e game and you are going to have a good last year of D&D vanilla 5e before it is finished up. So I know this was not critical at all. This was a quick, quick flip through and just my random 15 minute, uh, you know, gushing of praise about this book. But I really, I can't praise it enough for, uh, as a fifth edition product, um, really spot on. Well done, MCDM Studios. Well done, Matt. Uh, this is just a masterclass in how to write a monster manual, how to present it, how to, how to uh, you know, pay attention to all the details and to take what you have in a system and build you know, build from the ground up a, a set of monsters that works really well with what you have going on at the table. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you all around. <laughs>